most traders have a misconception about lagging indicators. They think that just because it is lagging, then it's too late and there's no value in using them. But that can't be further from the truth. Well, in this video, I want to show you a glimpse of how institutional traders use lagging indicators when trading. I learned this from a friend who is an institutional trader who gave me some insights about how they use it effectively. And in today's video, I want to share this with you because I know many of you do not have access to such information. Institutional traders use it in a slightly different manner and that's what gives them an edge over the typical retail trader. So this video is packed with value and you definitely want to watch this till the end. Sounds good? So as always, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that and it helps this channel reach more traders like yourself. We also do a giveaway for every single video we upload. So look out for an emoji somewhere in this video if you wish to participate. You can also find the full instructions in a pinned comment down below. Now you see, you are right in the sense that lagging indicators often fire the signals after the movement. So what happens is that retail traders typically use a lagging indicator like this. And as you can see, it's usually too late. And even if you are right, you are probably getting a pretty awful risk to reward ratio. And it's pretty hard to become profitable since you can't cover your losses. Just in case you do not know what lagging indicators are, lagging indicators are derived from price and lag price since you are using past data. Some of the more common lagging indicators have been covered in this YouTube channel, such as the MACD and the moving averages. If that brief explanation isn't sufficient for you and you still struggle to differentiate between a leading and lagging indicator, I have previously uploaded a video differentiating the two and how institutional traders combine both leading and lagging indicators. I recommend checking that video out next and I'll leave a link to that video at the top right and at the end of this video. If you think institutional traders are using some secret settings on their indicators that you don't know about, you're mistaken. Because it's not so much about the settings but rather they are approaching using the indicator. By the end of this video, it will be crystal clear that they do things differently. So keep watching. Let me show you how institutional traders use a lagging indicator in contrast to a retail trader. For this example, I will illustrate using the MACD. But the same concept applies to other lagging indicators such as the moving average and the stochastic indicator. So again, a typical retail trader might be using the MACD crossover as an entry trigger. When the MACD crosses over here, he buys and when it crosses over here, he sells. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, in my previous MACD video, I did cover how to use crossovers with market structure. But hey, institutional traders take things one step further by filtering out these signals. And the first thing they look at is to evaluate the risk to reward. If the risk to reward is still lucrative and favorable, then they might go ahead to take the trade. They ask themselves if there is positive expectancy if they were to take the trade. A positive expectancy means that when a trader averages out all the wins and losses, they will come out a hit. So now you might be asking why? In day chasing the trade, how is it different from a retail trader? To which I answer, yes that's right, they are indeed chasing the trade, but only if the risk to reward still makes sense. They would be better off taking the trade than missing the trade entirely if the market doesn't pull back. And if the trade does indeed pull back, it doesn't bother them because they know that the risk to reward is favorable and they will come out ahead as long as they keep taking setups like this consistently with good risk management. You might ask what a lucrative and favorable risk to reward is. 
Well, there's really no fixed answer, but I would say strive to have at least a minimum of 1 is to 1.5. Meaning to say that for every dollar you raise, you should expect to make $1.50 back. By having a risk to reward of at least 1 is to 1.5, you can be wrong half the time and still make money. So this is what institutional traders are thinking about. The long-term expectancy of the trades that they are taking. The average retail trader doesn't consider the risk to reward and the long-term expectancy. He sees the signal and because he is fearful of missing out, he takes a trade without considering if there is sufficient profit. To him, he's happy to make a little profit than no profit. And while that may sound attractive, such plays are likely to result in a negative expectancy. Meaning to say that he will lose money on balance if he trades like this. So this is the first thing that the institutional trader does differently. The second thing that an institutional trader does is to wait for a retracement after the signal has been fired. This builds on the first point and might sound contradictory. So pay close attention and keep watching. So suppose the MACD fires and the market has already moved. The institutional trader evaluates the risk to reward and deems that the risk to reward is way too low. So rather than chasing the market, he patiently waits for a pullback to the level. Now this could be a pullback to the market structure level or a key support and resistance level. The institutional trader then looks for an entry trigger to enter into the trade at a discounted price. The entry trigger could be a trend line break in the lower time frame or some sort of candlestick pattern of the key support and resistance. So notice the stark difference. The institutional trader uses the late MACD signal as a sign that the market is ready to turn and then looks for a low risk opportunity to enter in the direction of the MACD. He doesn't trade off the MACD signal directly if the risk to reward isn't favorable. So let me show you another example of what I mean to drive home the point. So we see that price is rising here and by the time the MACD fires a bullish signal, price has already moved quite a fair bit. And if you were to look at the nearest resistance, it's pretty obvious that the risk to reward is terrible. So what's the solution? Well, patiently waiting for price to retrace and look for an entry trigger. So price does indeed make the retracement and we enter upon confirmation. Now I can probably hear you saying, but what happens if the market doesn't pull back? Does that mean that I miss out on a trade? Well, as I mentioned earlier, chasing the trade and taking poor reward to risk trades will likely lead to negative expectancy. So you want to avoid doing that. So this is how institutional traders separate themselves from the pack by approaching their trades with a longer term perspective and asking themselves if they'll make money on balance in the long term. They don't need to make money of this one trade and they know that their age will play out with enough trades. Now as a recap, institutional traders are comfortable chasing after trades and entering trades so long as the risk to reward is favorable. Ideally, you want to see a decent risk to reward of at least 1 is to 1.5. And if the signals fired by the lagging indicator are fired too late and price has already moved without much profit left, then institutional traders wait patiently for a retracement and look to enter using a price entry trigger. And that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you got value. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment with the emoji plus win forex signals to enter yourself into our giveaway. The winner will be announced in the next video so turn on the notification bell and check to see if you have won. As promised, I will leave a link to the video on how institutional traders combine leading and lagging indicators and if you are into indicators, then that's the next video I recommend checking out next. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.